Hi guys, welcome back to Lost of All Library. My name's Kate. Today I am doing a video about the 10 best books that I have read this year. Um, this is, I saw this, someone recently do this. I thought it would be good to look back um, at books that I've read so far that I have really, really enjoyed. So, the first two, I'm going to just go ahead and wrap these two up in, uh, because they are both by the same author, and both I have recently read. Uh, the first one is The Martian, and the second one is Project Hail Mary, both by Andy Weir. Uh, the Martian is about a man who, on a trip to Mars, um, gets stuck on Mars and has to learn how to live um, on his little spaceship on Mars. Project Hail Mary is about uh, a guy, a science teacher, who is sent to another galaxy because uh, these things called astrophage are eating the sun rays. And it's affecting Earth, and so it, they are being sent to another galaxy to try and find the natural predator for astrophage. And while there, um, his two teammates actually don't make it, um, but he meets an alien, and his name is Rocky, um, affectionately called Rocky. And it's their story. It's I, I really love Project Hail Mary. I actually think I might like Project Hail Mary more than I like The Martian because I really loved Rocky. Um and I loved that whole that whole situation more than I really liked The Martian. But The Martian is still really, really good. Um both are sciencey without being like you can't it's not somewhere to the point where you can't understand it if you don't know science um it's they're both really really good highly highly recommend sci-fi's um Andy Weir has a way of writing in a way that make, doesn't make you feel dumb and they're both very likable characters. I highly recommend both. Uh, the next one is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. The, I read this earlier this year. I've also read the sequel, which is uh, Good Girl Bad Blood. I um, have yet to read the third book. Um, the second book I liked, but I didn't like it as much as I liked A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And I think it's because I liked the mystery, the murder aspect of a girl goes, girl, good girl's guide to murder, um, and the aspect of trying to kind of avenge uh, Sal Singh, trying to prove his innocence um, when everybody else thinks he is a murderer. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Is it's such a good I love Pip as a main character and I love her relationship with um Robbie I'm blanking on his name um the younger brother of Sal um I love their relationship and I it's just so interesting and I like the kind of podcast aspect of it as well and I look forward to reading I do own it um, As Good As Dead. I think that's the third book. Next one is Tower of Nero by Rick Wright Orton. This is the last book in the uh, Trials of Apollo series. I think this is a really fitting good end to um, the Trials of Apollo series. This is... It made me emotional. Um, it made me very excited to see where, um, Nico and Will's book is going to go, because we are getting a Nico and Will book, a solo Angela book. I'm very excited. 
Um, that's coming out very soon, hopefully. Um, I just really, really liked it. You really can't go wrong with Rick Arden at all. Um, it did make me emotional as the other finales have made me. Um, I feel like this one was toned down a little bit, maybe, but like the last chapter, um, uh, made me feel good. Made me feel really good. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. Going, continuing on with series finales, um, I have Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. This is the second of the duology of Six of Crows. I absolutely loved Six of Crows last year when I read it. I think it was probably, I think I said it was my favorite book of the year, and for a good reason. It was very, very good. Crooked Kingdom. Um, I think it is a very, very good follow-up to Six of Crows. I don't think the death, oh shush, that was loud, I don't think the death of the one character uh, was a very good death, nor was it warranted, but other than that, I really enjoyed Crooked Kingdom, I enjoyed seeing Kaz's like plan and how just genius some of the things he comes up with. Um, like he says, like, um, I want to have Pekka running out once we have the plague bells going with a doctor. Um, and that's going to make people think that he has the plague, um, although he's running to save his son, which is actually... Uh, in trouble, but to make the appearance look as though he might have the plague. Very, very smart. There's multiple layers for things that Kaz was doing in this book, and you're like, okay, I think I understand why this is, why he's doing this, and then he's like, oh, and then there's another reason for what he's doing on top of that, and you're just like, what? This is genius. My boy Kaz Rucker is a genius. And I love him. And I love the romance scenes for all three couples in this book. Um, even though Jasper made a massive boo-boo at one point. It's fine. They're okay. Jasper and Wyland are okay. I, uh, oh. This might not be the finale. Um, Lee Bardugo might be making a third book. And I'm very excited. <laughs> and nervous at the same time. Okay, the next one is an Izzy published book that I really enjoyed. And that was Angel Eyes by Ian Willis. I was going back and forth of whether or not put Angel Eyes or um, Devil's Night, which is the first book in this. But I had decided to go with Angel Eyes. I think I like this one just a little bit more because this is a, kind of a conspiracy theory book about um, this house where at the beginning of the book, um, D, I think that's her name, um, is trying to, she's living in this house. Um, her uncle and boyfriend all both disappeared from this house long ago. Um, presumed dead at this point. And at the beginning of the book, Dee actually dies. And our new main character, whose name is escaping me, moves in. And there's all these rumors about, like, um, this mysterious movie that was made that had both D and her boyfriend in it was made by her uncle um, that was so grotesque they had to take our uh, it's, it's so controversial that it had to be taken off and um, 
no longer, nobody could ever see it. So a lot of people have been trying to find this film because um, Dee's uncle was no, he had made other films. And so he was known in the film community. Uh, so it's kind of a conspiracy theory of like missing tape kind of thing. Um, Creepy pasta. I really enjoy this. I recommend this series. I ended up buying the third book, which is called um, Demon House, I believe. Um, I really enjoyed Penny Wright as my character. Um, and I look forward to continuing the series uh, because her brother is now a part of that. Um, he also has psychic powers. Penny does. Penny also has her own powers. Um, so it's interesting to see the two of them. And I enjoy following their relationship as well. Next one is Get a Life, Chloe Brown. This is the only romance on my, pure romance that's on my list. This is about Chloe Brown who has a chronic illness. And one day she has a near-death experience. And she decides that she's going to not let chronic illness keep her from doing the things she wants. So she makes a bucket list. And this is when she meets Red and decides um, that he, he's going to help there he's going to help her uh, fulfill her bucket list and this is really cute I really really enjoyed this I have not continued with the series um this is best romance I have read this year and I just it was so cute it was so cute highly highly recommend um, I love Red as a character. I love the diversity and the um, representation that Chloe brings to the table. Um, there's a cute cat named Smudge. I don't know what else you need to read this book because it's really good. Now, the next one is another middle grade. It is Nevermore the Child of Morgan Crow. I do own the rest of the series, but I do not have not read the rest of the series. This was really, really good. I am enjoy I enjoyed Morgan as the main character, uh, Jupiter North as the um uh her mentor and I enjoy her relationship with her best friend. Um going through the trials. The trials were interesting anytime there's a Charles aspect. There's it's usually really really interesting. Oh, uh, I like this kind of. Um, she may be a morally gray character um, with her powers, and I look forward to seeing where the Wondersmith. Um, storyline goes with the rest of the series. Um, and then we have my Stephen King novel, which I didn't think anything was going to best The Shining when it came to Stephen King. But oh boy, it did. And it was The Stand. Um, I put off reading The Stand for the longest time. Because one, it's massive. Two, there is a short story in Night Shift um, that I really, really did like. It was in, it was my least favorite story of that collection of short stories. And it's supposed to be set in the world of the sand. And I hated it with a burning passion. It's not good. And I, for the longest time, did not want to read The Stand because of that. Um, but thankfully, that main character is long dead and gone. Thank goodness. He's not in The Stand. And he, at least he wasn't the main character of the stand. Um, 
I really like the characters in this story. I think the characters are what make the story <laughs> of the stand because it's very character driven, not so much plot driven. This is about a virus that wipes out a m big chunk of the United States to the point where, um, like, there's no government or anything. And people start moving to two of either places, and that is Colorado or Las Vegas, um, depending on if you're going to follow this dichotomy of, like, good versus evil. So good are going to Colorado, evil are going to Las Vegas. And I, it's just so good. The first half is kind of these characters mingling and then going to Colorado, um, our main characters, and then, um, the rest is trying to, like, build society, basically, with this over-looming threat of what's happening in, um, well, I guess Las Vegas, and it's, oh, it's so good. It's such a good book. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I just, Oh, I really think y'all should read it. I look, want to re watch the miniseries that recently came out in 2020. Um, because the cast is stellar. And I just, oh, it looks so good. Hopefully it's good. And the last one is actually a book I have not finished. But I think it's definitely going to be a favorite book. I think it's going to be five stars. Um, as... I'm currently reading it. Uh, and it's A Promised Land by Barack Obama. This is his autobiography. And I really, really enjoy this. This is making me realize that Barack Obama, although even if you don't agree with what his political stance is, you have to admit that he is a very likable person. Um, his relationship with Michelle is very cute and like couple goals like really they're really cute and I just love them so much <laughs> um and I'm just learning a lot because I was young when Obama um first took came into office um so I'm learning a lot about what was happening at the time and I feel like I was very um sheltered from that um so it's very interesting to kind of read about like the 2008 recession which I knew was a thing but I didn't know how bad it was at that point um so I just really really enjoyed reading all of that it's going to be a favorite by the end of the year I can already tell. It's really, really good. I'm probably going to give it five stars. Alright, and that has been the 10 books. My 10 best books I have read this year. What do you think? Have you read any of these? What were your thoughts on these? Um, what were some of your favorites so far this year? If you like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. I will see you in my next video. Go be a good cabbage today. Do something kind for someone, even if that is for yourself. Because self-care is important. I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.